I'd like to call the meeting to order. I'd like to invite up Bishop Allen to come lead us in a prayer before our meeting. And um, if we can remember in a special way in our prayer, some members of our community, Dominic Scandoro and our great friend, Mr. Buddy Sealing, who, um, who have left us. Father, we come this evening to thank you that you have allowed us to make it back to this designated place. And we ask you to help us to come to resolution in those things that we cannot do. We pray that your power and your Holy Spirit will keep us and guide us. And we thank you for everyone tonight. We pray blessings on all those that are here and on their way. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. And we'd also like to, for you to remember in your prayers for he and his family, uh, Mr. Um, Shellis, Mr. Sonny Shellis, who was a longtime wonderful coach for Kenner Recreation. And also for my sister B. Mumphrey Ward, who passed away in Texas this past week. So we ask you to remember them and um, bless the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Council Member Stagney, if you could lead us in the pledge. Madam Chairman, you have a quorum this evening. In accordance with Council Resolution Number B14550, please be advised that all cellular telephones, pages, beepers, and other devices of this nature must be deactivated or silenced throughout the Council meeting. Madam Chairman, we've received a request this evening to change the order of business to take item 18A at the beginning of the meeting. I have a motion by Council Member Black, second by Council Member Brannigan to change the order of business. Is that the motion? Yes, ma'am. Council members, please vote. One more vote. Ken, are you? One more. One vote pending. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to change the order of business. At the request of Council Member Keith Reno, a discussion regarding the 2013 legislative session given by the Louisiana State Senator Gary Smith of District 19. Council Member Reno. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Senator Gary Smith, uh, we appreciate you coming here tonight and all everything that y'all do, the whole, all of our legislators, um, and I'm going to let you turn it over to you. <laughs> thank you. Good evening. It's uh, good to be here with y'all this evening. I want to thank y'all for giving me the opportunity to speak with you for just a minute. I, I won't be very long. I'll be brief, but I appreciate the uh, invitation that you all extended a few weeks ago, um, but I was not able to make it, so I, I certainly wanted to take you up and come and visit with you for a minute. I know a lot of residents don't realize that District 19 now covers uh, parts of Kenner and Jefferson, which uh, District 19 is composed of St. Charles, St. John, Lafouche, and, and Jefferson. And so it's a, a large district. I reside out of St. Charles Parish, but I've uh, certainly uh, had a good time and it's been a pleasure representing uh, Jefferson Parish and, and the city of Kenner over the last two years. And I, I look forward to continuing to work with all of you. I know. Uh, Representative Stokes and Senator Martini came here, and so I won't belabor you with too many details of the last session, but as I'm sure they told you, it was a, a fiscal-only session, which we do every odd number of years, which means we deal with primarily fi uh, fiscal matters of the state and budgetary matters where we look at taxes and tax credits and incentives and increases uh, with just a few non-tax-related issues thrown in there to keep some of the other members busy who are not on one of the money committees. Um, it was a particularly tough year. I, I'm sure you all heard about a lot of it in the, the newspapers. Uh, I know a lot of the, the public followed along and we had a lot of struggles. This was our fifth year in a row that we had budget deficits, serious budget deficits, uh, mainly caused by sluggish economies, reduction in federal dollars from uh, hurricane aid and uh, also in Medicaid and Medicare reductions that they've 
they have taken away from us. Uh, we've also had a sluggish economy due to the fact that we've had over or sluggish revenues due to the fact that we've had over $2 billion worth of tax incentives, credits, and reductions that have kicked in that uh, we've done over the last uh, 10 years while, while we've been in office there that the citizens and the businesses of this great state have been able to take advantage of. And while they do create business on one end, that they have meant a reduction of revenues, direct revenues to the state uh, at this point in time. Uh, we've done the best we could, though, uh, even in the face of a, of a deficit. We passed a $25.4 billion budget, which was actually $350 million less than last year. So we're trying at a, a state level to do our best to keep our, our budget in check and in line. It's, it's down from the mid-30s. We were in the mid-30s just a few years ago, and so we've sift, uh, significantly reduced uh, state government, reducing positions. We've reduced another 12,000 uh, state positions uh, this year. So we're bringing those numbers back down. We've gotten out of hand for a while there and had uh, per capita too many uh, state employees there. And so we're bringing that back down in line with some of these fiscal times. Uh, but all in all, I'm very proud that uh, Democrats and Republicans, House members, Senate members all came together when the newspapers and the press and, and other outlets were saying that we were not going to come up with a, a constitutionally mandated balanced budget, but we did, and we did it before the six o'clock deadline on the last day of session. So I was I was a proud that uh, to be a part of the fact that we all came together and and did that, uh, did our constitutionally mandated duties, and I think came up with a good solid budget. Uh, we had for the first time in about five years increases to the MFP to the tune of about sixty nine million dollars. We had increases in uh, or we gave raises to our our uh, public school teachers, uh, although it'd be a little bit, but it, it was it was something and it was a step in the right direction. We did new market tax credits and incentives for our businesses to help some of our small startup businesses and some of the small struggling businesses stay in there because we all know that's the backbone of this great state and of this great nation. And so I was proud that, that we did some of those things. Uh, we also, I'm proud to say that we had a very tight and stressed capital outlay budget, but we did pretty well here in the city of Kenner and in the parish of Jefferson. We had about uh, about 10 projects that we we were able to secure financing for money for at a tune of a little over a, um, a million dollars. So uh, although that's not a, a big sum, it is a big sum when you look at, at the picture of the financial capital outlay uh, at this point in time. And so I was very glad we were able to do that and, and bring home some much needed drainage projects and road improvement projects and uh, and whatnot. And so uh, that, that's kind of just a, a very, very brief overview, but mainly I wanted to just uh, come in and um, tell you all hello and tell you that it's been a pleasure working with all of you again over the last two years, and I look forward to doing all that I can to help uh, all of you and the mayor and, and the residents of the city of Kenner over the next two years. And, and if I can do anything or ask answer any questions for any of you, uh, I'd be happy to. Okay, it's a few people's lights are on, so perhaps right. you get the opportunity right now. Uh, Council Member Stagney. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I can remember I used to lobby in the legislature uh, for the chiropractic profession on, on several different issues, and, and I'm going to tell you that uh, back then, Gary Smith was one of the best state representatives uh, out there. He was involved on every issue, and he made sure he knew the issues before voting on it, which is very difficult when you get the number of bills going through the legislature as they get. Uh, uh, myself and State Representative Tom Wilmot, when the redistricting occurred, uh, almost uh, a good portion of Representative Wilmot's district and probably three or four of my 10 precincts were uh, Senator Smith was taking over, and we met with him, and you know, he promised then that he would not let this small little bitty portion of his district go unnoticed. And for the last two years, he's been one of those uh, who are instrumental in bringing mud money back to the city of Kenner. So one, I wanna publicly state that you fulfilled that promise. When you made it, uh, you never know what somebody's gonna do, but you have fulfilled that promise. You've gotten money to us from the capital outlay, and we appreciate it very much. And uh, you know, I wish I could say Gary was the first one in his family uh, in public service, but he comes from uh, a grandfather who uh, who was a longtime member of the New Orleans Aviation Board, and Mr. Henry served uh, the New Orleans Aviation Board in this region well, and he was somebody that you could always talk to. So we appreciate your service and everything that you've done, and, and I know it's following a family tradition. Thank, thank you. 
Thank you, Madam President. Councilmember DeFranchis. Thank you, Council President. I've known Senator Smith quite a, for quite a few years in his family. And I want to tell you, having gotten to know him over the last few years, I find him not only to be intelligent and knowledgeable, but he's accessible. And that's one of the most important things. When you're serving the public, to be accessible and to know the issues. And that's exactly what he does and what he is. So I, I know we in the city of Kenner appreciate your service. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to come more often. Council, <laughs> Council Member Carroll. Thank you, Madam. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Attorney. Uh, senator Smith, you and I just met when you became the senator for our area. Uh, the, so our relationship don't, don't go far a little back than that. But by you being in the state representative in St. Charles Parish, which is our neighbors, immediate neighbors to the west, you have, you know, the sense of the area, especially in South Kenner and District 1. So it was a good transition from, from the state to the state senator. And we look forward to your support in the future like you have done for St. Charles Parish for all these years. You know, we look forward to things that are specifically related to some areas for the Lincoln Manor subdivision that you have got involved with, with the canals, with the erosion. And, uh, you know, one of the things that you said is very important, uh, the relationship with all you gentlemen and ladies. Now, uh, Senate Republicans or Democrats, it's a good working group together which means everything works a whole lot better for us as a community. So we look forward for that and look forward to the continual relationships between both parties for our area. And have a nice evening. Thanks for coming. See you next time. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam President. That was painless. I, I enjoyed that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I think that's, that's it. Well, uh, again, uh, it, it's my pleasure. I, I'm certainly. You'd like to, oh, never mind. Councilmember Black. <laughs> First of all, I want to acknowledge you and thank you for coming because I know it's not easy. You have a busy schedule and coming to face us and being on in front of us and asking, having questions, asking, you have to be right, Johnny, on the spot. And it seems like you've passed and you, you know your stuff. One thing I want to ask you about, and this really, I know you, you would be probably working with Councilman Carroll, but you know, St. Charles Parish is dead to my heart. I have a son a daughter-in-law, and more, more importantly, my granddaughter, uh, who are residents. Uh, I have noticed what uh, she was able to accomplish, along with the, the other district councilmen, what they've done to Almedia Road, and that it had taken all of the, the um, hazardous conditions when you used to come in and out off of Almedia Road onto uh, River Road. It was really hazardous. We have a similar situation at Alliance, which is right into Kenner, right when you cross into Kenner, Alliance Avenue, is that area where you come out right from a curb on River Road, and it's really hazardous. We had a, a workman killed about six years ago um, because of being obstructed. And I think it would be very good if we could do something similar or to widen the turn right there on Alliance. And I'm not stealing Mr. Sure. Mr. Carroll's thunder. I think he would agree with me on that because we do have a lot of traffic that funnels in from Airline and either going back to Kenner or on to, further into St. Charles Parish. So that's one intersection I would really like for you all to look at in the next, the next session to see if we could get some state funding to help improve that intersection. I'd be happy to do that. I'm familiar with that road. and It, it is a, a heavily used access road to go between the Airline and the River Road. And, right. Uh, and it's dangerous because of that wide turn that comes, that S curve that comes in. It's difficult to see the traffic coming from the other direction. It, it is, and it's so it's so busy in that area, especially in the mornings and afternoons. But I'd be happy to work with thank you with all of you and, and Gregory work with you on uh, putting together some kind of a plan with the Department of Transportation and how we can make that a, a safer area for the citizens and the people who travel on it. Thank you, and thanks for coming. Thank and you. since it's an S turn, we could call it Sage's Crossing. That would be good. Uh, that's her granddaughter's name. Ah. <laughs> uh, Council Member Reno. Thank you. And, and uh, Senator Smith, thank you again for coming. Uh, we appreciate your time. We appreciate the update, and we appreciate all that y'all do for, for Kenner and our citizens. So thank you much. Th thank you. I appreciate you putting me on the, the agenda, and I, I appreciate y'all uh, allowing me to to get in here and um, for, for some of your other important business that I know you're getting ready to take up. And uh, I really, I, I, y'all have been very kind, and I, but I do sincerely enjoy working with you all and look forward to continuing to work with you. And, and I'm happy to come back anytime. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank right. you very much. All right. Good night.
Council Clerk. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. We will move on to the consent agenda this evening. Item one is approval of minutes, the regular council meeting of August 15, 2013. Item two is approval of alcoholic beverage permit applications. Item 2A is a resolution granting an alcohol beverage permit to the Deutsches House to have deliveries on October 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th, 2013, and to sell alcoholic beverages on the October 11th and 12th, 2013, at 415 Williams Boulevard, being a property owned by the City of Kenner in Kenner, Louisiana. Item 2B is a resolution granting an alcoholic beverage permit to the Deutsches House to have deliveries on October 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th, 2013, and to sell alcoholic beverages on October 18th and 29th, 2013, at 415 Williams Boulevard, being property owned by the City of Kenner in Kenner, Louisiana. Item 2C is a resolution granting an alcoholic beverage permit to the Deutsches House to have deliveries on October 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of 2013, and to sell alcoholic beverages on October 25th and 26th, 2013, at 415 Williams Boulevard, being property owned by the City of Kenner in Kenner, Louisiana. Item 2D is a resolution granting an alcoholic beverage permit to Deutsches House to deliver and, and or return of alcoholic beverages on October 28th, 29th, and 30th, 2013 at 415 Williams Boulevard, being property owned by the City of Kenner in Kenner, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Item 3 is approval of bingo and public gathering applications. Item 3A, Madam Chairman, this evening we received a request from the Recreation Department to remove this item from the agenda. If I could please get a motion and a second and a vote to remove the item. Motion by Councilmember Black, second by Councilmember Brannigan to remove item 3A. Council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to remove this item. Item 3B is application number 1766 of Rivertown Merchants Association and the Friends of Rivertown to hold a public gathering for the purpose of a bike festival, bike, bicycle safety on September 15, 2013 from 11 to 6 p.m. at various locations in Rivertown. Madam Chairman, also the Recreation Department has requested that this item be amended to read Saturday, September 14th. If I could get the same um, motion by Councilmember Black, second by Councilmember Bryan again to reflect the date change. Council members, please vote. Um, Madam Chairman, motion passes 7 0. Item 4 is correspondence reports from the mayor, CAO, and our department heads. Item 4A, Madam Chairman, we've received a request from the administration to defer this item for one meeting due to some um, video issues we're having in the chambers this evening. Yeah, this item is going to be a PowerPoint uh, presentation, so since our video equipment is not working properly, we're going to uh, defer it for one meeting. One meeting. One yes, meeting. Motion by Councilmember Black, second by Councilmember Brannigan on a one meeting deferral. Please vote. One more vote, please. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0 for one meeting deferral. Now I have a motion by Councilmember Black, second by Councilmember Brannigan on consent. Not just yet. I got a little bit more to read still. Item five is acceptance and rejection of bids requiring an expenditure of less than $5,000. Item 5A is a resolution accepting the sole source provider for the purchase of internet access and supplements to hard copies of the up-to-date Kenner Code of Ordinances in order to research the Municipal Code Corporation in the amount of $3,053.61 for the City of Kenner Council Office. Item 5B yeah. is a resolution approving repairs to SCAG lawn equipment in the amount of $2,797.50 by Vaughn's Power Equipment Incorporated, an authorized dealer of SCAG equipment for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Item 5C is a resolution accepting the responsive bid received from Temp Patrol Refrigeration Company Incorporated in the amount of $3,360 to furnish and install walk-in freezer door at Building D Emergency Operations Center in accordance with telephone bid number T13-2076 for the Department of Public Works. Item 5D is a resolution accepting the responsive 
bid received from OPA Graphics Incorporated in the amount of $3,114.66 to fabricate and install lettering for the I-10 gateway sign located at exit 223A Williams Boulevard in accordance with telephone bid number T13-2084 for the Department of Public Works. Item 5E is a resolution approving the purchase of three sets of bunker gear in the amount of $4,990 from Casco Industries Incorporated, an authorized dealer of Glove Manufacturing Company LLC gear for the Kenner Fire Department. Okay. Item 6 is change orders requiring an expenditure of less than $5,000. We have none. Item 7 is acceptance of committee findings for final passage, and we have none. Item 8 is resubdivision ordinances for final passage, and we have none. Now, a motion by Councilmember Black, second by Councilmember Brannigan. I have uh, two questions. One is uh, a question that came to me uh, about procedure. Was it proper for us to remove this, Mr. Conley, from um, during the consent, or was, would this item have had to be moved to a different juncture and then removed? Is no, it, it could be removed from consent. It can. Okay. And then second question was uh, the item that we did remove, item 3A, um, we were asking for clarity as to why it was removed. I had understood that it was because the application did not have proper insurances and couldn't go forward, but then I was told that perhaps they had worked things out. Mr. Maricoli, do you know? I mean, should we have removed it? Is, was yes, that the proper they, they thing? hadn't turned in um, the insurance as of um, the, today. They, they are in the process. They should have everything, and we should be able to put it on the next agenda so that it'll be taken, taken up in time for their, uh, their event. But the insurance, they, um, they had a, a tragedy with their insurance agents, and then they had to use another insurance company, so they were working out the details. Okay, so our next meeting will be on, what, the, the 19th? 19th? So it'll be before this the, event? Correct. Will it have had the proper amount of layover or whatever is required for it to be effective? Yes, because basically for the, um, with, with the public gathering permits, it's basically once, you know, we get through there, we can, we can move forward with that. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, seeing no further discussion, council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0 for the consent agenda. Under the public appearance agenda this evening, we have item 9, public hearings for final passage. Item 9A is a public hearing regarding summary ordinance number 11,594, an ordinance approving a planned unit development for a dental office located on lot 4A1, parcel C, Canes Brule subdivision, Kenner Jefferson Parish, Louisiana, which property is governed by special ordinance 7214. Motion by Councilmember DeFrancis, second by Councilmember Brannigan to open a public hearing. Council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. We're now in a public hearing regarding summary ordinance. Well, we don't have an ordinance number. 11,594. Anyone from the audience wishing to address the council on this subject matter? Please come forward now. Council President, I have a presentation to give. Mr. Abear. Um, Madam Chairman, lot 4A1 is located at the south east corner of West Esplanade Avenue and Cattle Farm Road. It's located in Council District 4. The site is governed by Special Ordinance 7214. It was adopted May 18, 1995. It approved a PUD, Plan Unit Development for a Restaurant. The site includes a 3,500 square foot single story building with associated parking lot. The area contains a combination of uses that includes a commercial strip center and restaurants, uh, professional offices, and multifamily uses. The Esplanade Mall is located uh, southeast of the site. The proposal includes a change in use of the existing development site from a ground patty restaurant to a dental office. The existing building footprint is not being altered or expanded. A uh, minimum of 17.5 Wall Street parking spaces are required for the proposed use. There are currently 40 uh, existing parking spaces at the site. The two existing entrance and exit points uh, for the site located along Cattle Farm Road will be reutilized. The existing landscape layout will be incorporated into a new plan with some minor improvements, which include the addition of several new trees to the north and west sides of the building, as well as the parking lot area. Also, new shrubs will be added along the north and east sides of the building, as well as along the existing dumpster corral, which is located at three of the parking lots. 
Exterior alterations to the building include a smooth painted stucco finish, a flat building power pit that will extend across the length of each building side, and a new metal canopy will, replace, uh, will be placed above the existing doors. With regards to signage, one new detached sign will, uh, consisting of 56 square feet will be located in the existing monument sign location that fronts West Esplanade Avenue. Attached building signs will be placed on the north and west sides of the building, each consisting of 43 square feet. The proposed signage does meet the Esplanade Mall's sign criteria for the mall out parcels. This is essentially a change in use that meets the minimum required regulations of the city's comprehensive zoning ordinance. Therefore, the Planning Department and the Planning Commission both recommend approval. Thank you, Mr. Bear. Anyone else? Motion by Councilmember DeFranchis, second by Councilmember Brannigan to close public hearing. Council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Motion by Councilmember DeFranchis, second by Councilmember Brannigan. Councilmember DeFranchis. Sorry. Thank you very much, Council President. First of all, I want to thank Mr. Bear. Uh, the gentleman that owned the ground patty and his, um, his real estate person called me a long time ago. Uh, he was rather elderly. He didn't want to continue working uh, and wanted to sell the property at some point. But he didn't want it known yet because he didn't want to uh, obviously hurt his employees. It might have taken a long time to find someone to purchase it and make it viable again. So uh, again, he didn't want his employees to suffer and possibly you know, uh, close the restaurant early until he had a, someone, a buyer who was willing to reinvest in that area. And we have a buyer who is willing to reinvest in that area. And I'd like him to have a chance to talk about uh, about his dental office and what he plans to do there. I went to see his existing office and I was very impressed with the quality of the work there and what his plans for the new one. I think it will be a, a, a really positive uh, improvement to the area. And so if you would like to step up to the mic and, and introduce yourself. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank um, Excuse Jay me. Could and, and you, could you state your name? I'm sorry, Daryl Dar Berg, and I'm uh, I guess petitioned for the zoning change and uh, proposed buyer of the site. Well, thank you. Uh, so, but uh, I'd like to thank Jay and Chris for working with this. They were uh, very uh, amenable to us and well, a, a pleasure to work with. And I've, I've been through similar situations in Jefferson Parish and Orleans, and I can tell you it was a much smoother operation and. Definitely, uh, Jay has things under control, so I think y'all are blessed to have someone like him in his position. Um, I, I'm just here, obviously, to support the uh, proposal and to answer any questions. I have here the, the current owner, um, my architect, and um, my, my partner, Dennis, here, as well as the operations manager. So if any questions you have uh, concerning the amendment, we'd be glad to answer. We do have some um, drawings of the proposed exterior uh, as well as the landscaping. Well, one of the things we want to mention is that obviously the new landscaping ordinance will be enforced and you have been very, from day one when I spoke to you, you said you would be not only willing to um, make sure that the whole area is landscaped, but make it a very, very positive part of the community. And I think that shows. And as I said, I went to your other office. I saw the quality of the work that you had done there. And I know that that same quality will be used in, in remodeling and uh, uh, in this particular office. Well, we would actually hope to be a much uh, superior quality, to be honest with you. And um, we, we are very excited about the uh, proposed uh, beautification of Kenner and we're excited to be a part of it and um, we're hoping for passage of this and hope to be uh, partners with Kenner for many years to come. Thank you and I want to make one final comment that in touch on what you said. Isn't it wonderful to hear for a change and I don't mean that in a negative way because some people always complain or when something positive happens we never hear about it. We only hear the negative but it was great to hear something really positive. The statement you made about Mr. A. Bear and, and the other people in his office, how easy the process was here in Kenner to work together and make it happen and make it a reality. Uh, and that says a lot about the quality of his department. And so I think I want to thank you for making that statement publicly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask, where is your other office? 
Well, I have a, um, I have a, currently have an office in Morero. I've been there since 2001, so for, is that 12 years? Um, and we're actually about to expand there and, and do an addition there, so we're kind of going through the same thing. But currently, uh, we've been here in Kenner since October of 2010, so not quite three years. And currently, we're at 4134 Florida Avenue, which is um, near the section of uh, Vintage. Uh, so we're there, and our, you know our lease ends. Well, we actually signed about a year extension, so we got a year left on it. But not too long ago, um, I had met with the um, Jetco rep, uh, Lindsey Bordelon, mm -hmm. and uh, the mayor and and uh, CAO, Mr. Mike here. And you know we're looking to relocate, and we're basically looking to either go into West Metairie or Kenner. We'd love to keep it in Kenner. Uh, but that's kind of the area we want to be in, and the we just happened to find the site that was suitable for us, and we, we feel real excited about the, situa the, the the location. I don't think we could find a better location, we feel. Um, and so our, our plans would be to hopefully be into the location by April 1st. We are kind of have some preliminary drawings already done. We plan on beginning construction no later than maybe November 1st, and like I said, I hope to be operational by April 1st of 2014. And there's still the dental office right down the street? Right behind it? As far as I know, I don't know. It, there is another, okay, yeah. nice, great. Thank you very much, All appreciate right, thank it. Thank you. Okay, seeing no further discussion, council members, please vote. I don't know if we had moved. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 9B is a public hearing regarding resolution number B16387, a resolution authorizing the City Council for the City of Kenner to hold a public hearing to determine whether or not the building located at 3549 West Loyola Drive, Kenner, Louisiana, should not be de repaired or demolished. Motion by Council Member, excuse me, I need to. Motion by Council Member De, um, Denapolis, second by Council Member Black to open a public hearing. I couldn't find my supplemental. Council members, please vote. One more. <laughs> Madam Chairman, motion passes 7 0. We're now in a public hearing regarding resolution number B16387. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the council on this subject matter? Um, I have a presentation I have to carry to here also, oh. council president. Okay, Ms. Shaw. Okay, and, and you have the pictures, or you have a stack of pictures in yes, front of we you, do. and the, public, the viewing public at home can see these pictures also. Okay, so because we're having difficulty with our screens, it'll be on KTV, but um, not necessarily available for anyone in the audience yes. at this moment to see. Okay. The structure in question is a one-story, single-family pile supported slab foundation bearing a municipal address of 3549 West Loyola Drive. The property is owned by Mr. and Mrs. Willie Tuxon. On June 22, 2012, it was determined the property located at 3549 West Loyola Drive was unsafe and dangerous on the building close to the City of Kenner, as well as Section 557 at all of the Court of Ordinances for the City of Kenner. On June 22, 2012, the notice was sent certified members of property owners advising them of the property and building violations. The notice was sent to property owners at the above reference address as well as addresses found via search engines. After repeated attempts to locate the owners and after certified mail's return, a claim and curator is appointed by the city. As of this date, the violations have not been corrected nor have been any attempts to comply. The city has been maintaining the property for several years and there is currently an amount owed of $13,288.87 to the city of Kenner for the upkeep of this property. The city of Kenner also contracted to service as an engineer and as noted by the report of the engineer retained by the city of Kenner who provided the following reasons of inadequate maintenance, dilapidation, and abandonment. All utilities have been disconnected. Severe subsidence and voids around the perimeter of the building allowing access to rodents, animals under the slab. Evidence that a fire occurred in the southwest corner of the structure. Wood soffit has either fallen off or is about to fall off along the back of the structure. Numerous framing members have signs of rot. Exterior siding has fallen off the southern side of the structures. Based on the report of the engineer, the structure is a serious public hazard and the roof is structurally unsound in the southwest corner. And it's recommended that the city takes steps 
necessary to declare a public nuisance and have it abated by demolition or brought up to the current city codes. We ask that the curator come up to give her note of evidence in this manner. Council President. State your name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Sophie Diane Rosado of the Rosado Law Firm. The address is 3005 Harvard Avenue, Suite 102, Metairie, Louisiana, 70006. Thank you. Um, I was appointed as curator to locate Mr. Willie Tuxen and his wife, Miss Alice Butler. In order to locate them, I ran an internet background search on Intellius at www.intelius.com. This website provided addresses and phone numbers for said individuals. The various phone numbers provided by the Intellius search were either disconnected, a wrong number, temporarily not in service, was not a working phone number, or had insufficient voicemail capabilities. On June 25th, 2013, I made contact on one phone number provided by the Intellius Search at 504-465-9791. A lady answered but would not give me her name. She said she was an in-law, not blood-related, and would contact relatives to see if she could have someone call me back, as she believed both Mr. and Mrs. Tuxen were deceased. I explained everything to her over the phone, that I was appointed as a curator, I'm not their attorney, and that I was only hired to locate Mr. Willie Tuxen and Miss Alice Butler, that the city of Kenner was looking to demolish the property located at 3549 West Loyola Drive in Kenner, and that they needed to hire an attorney. I received no call, phone call back and have since lost contact. 18 letters were mailed to the 18 addresses provided by the Intellius search. Of the 18 letters, 14 were returned to myself as either returned to sender, not deliverable, as addressed, unable to forward, returned to, to sender, insufficient address, unable to forward, or returned to sender, unclaimed, unable to forward. Four letters were delivered and signed. Return receipt was received by me. On June 13, 2013, I received a phone call from Miss Mary Tuxen, who claimed to be Mr. Willie Tuxen and Miss Alice Butler's daughter. She notified me that they were deceased and the city of Kenner could demolish the property located at 3549 West Loyola Drive in Kenner. I asked her to put that in writing and send that to me. However, I never received anything from her, so I contacted her again on July 26, 2013, explaining uh, the situation. She again informed me that her parents were deceased, her mother in 2000 and her father in 2003. She said she has five siblings, and again, I asked her to get me something in writing and contact an attorney as property rights were involved. She said that the house had too many liens and that her and her siblings probably wouldn't get anything. Again, I told her that property rights were involved and she should hire an attorney to handle this matter. She said she would get her siblings to sign something and send it to me in writing to demolish the property. However, to this day, I have not received anything from her and have lost contact. Not convinced the named defendants, had been located, I ran an advertisement from the Times-Picayune newspaper on July 14th, 17th, and 19th of 2013, asking that anyone knowing the whereabouts of Willie Tuxen and or his wife, Alice Butler, concerning property rights, please contact attorney Sophie Rosado at 504-534-5494. To date, I have not received any phone calls from this advertisement. Those are the steps that I took in locating the named defendants, and as a result, my search is concluded. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to address the council? Motion by Council Member DiNapolis, second by Council Member Black to close the public hearing. Council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7 0. Motion by Council Member DiNapolis, second by Council Member Black. Council Member DiNapolis. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And, and obviously, you have seen that the the attorney tried several times to attempt to, to, to reach his family and actually did a fantastic job and narrated it very, very well for us as to the struggle that you went through trying to obtain these people and make sure that they understood that they did have property rights. But the city of Kenner also has a right, too, to, to get rid of this blighted home. Uh, obviously, it's an orphan home. Nobody wants to claim to it. The city has been maintaining it for quite a few years, up to almost, what, $14,000 almost, and just gra grass cutting fees. And you know, it's the you know, it's, it's, it's on our shoulders here to watch the, you know, how we spend our taxpayer, you know, our, uh, you know, our constituents and our taxpayers' money. And here it is, almost $14,000 have been spent just maintaining this home. And 
you know, and, and we have other properties like this in District 5 as well as throughout Kenner, and we are taking a very strong stand in getting rid of these type of blighted homes. And I want to tell you that Ms. Shaw and her office did a fantastic job. Um, this was brought up to the council uh, about two meetings ago, I guess it was, that uh, we really needed to take forceful action on this particular home. And I'm, I'm just going to suggest that this time that the uh, city take its due course and demolish the home within the 30 days allowed by law. Help me out here. You're the attorney. I'm not. <laughs> it's the effective date of the resolution, and the parties have five days to appeal thereafter. Right. So whatever the effective date of the advertisement plus five days. So it's almost I'm 30 days. Yes. It's almost 30 days. Okay. Yes. So that I, you know, I'm, I'm, and I just hopefully my colleagues here also agree that you saw the pictures of this home. How would you like to live next to this? This is not something that we want to portray here in Kenner. So I, I vote to demolish the home within the time allowed by law. Thank you. Okay. All council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 10 is opening of bids. We have none. Item 11 is reclassification of zoning for final passage. We have none. Item 12 is other ordinances for final passage. We have none. Item 13. Item 13A is a resolution appointing Ignacio C. Iggy Villanueva to the City of Kenner Planning and Zoning Commission for a four-year term. Motion by... Council Member Reno, second by Council Member Black. Council Member Reno. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Um, this appointment is to uh, replace John DeHaven, uh, who I want to thank for his service uh, on this uh, commission. And um, his term, uh, he was appointed by uh, then Mayor, I mean, then Councilman Ben Zahn and um, for a four-year term, and that term ends this month. And uh, Iggy is a, uh, a resident of, uh, of District 3, uh, served uh, many years with the uh, Jefferson Parish uh, Police Force, or Sheriff's Office, uh, also served as the uh, uh, chief of the uh, Levy District, uh, has a construction background, and uh, I think he would uh, be fine to represent District 3 on the uh, Zoning and Planning Commission. Thank you. Okay, seeing no further discussion, council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 13B is a resolution authorizing the City Council for the City of Kenner to hold a public hearing to determine whether or not the building located at 2309 Kenner Avenue, Kenner, Louisiana, should not be repaired or demolished. Motion by Councilmember Carroll, second by Councilmember Black. Councilmember Carroll. Thank you, Madam President. And I would just like to, to clarify the date for this meeting to be held because it, it wasn't on the, on the board. It will be held on the 17th of October. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So October 17th, any interested party wants to attend the meeting, please attend on this date, October 17th. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 14 is items removed from the consent agenda. We have none. Item 15 is acceptance of contracts and similar matters approved by the mayor. Item 15A is an ordinance approving repairs to a 2009 Crown Victoria unit number 140 and the amount of $5,687 by Don's Unique Auto Incorporated for the Kenner Police Department. Madam Chairman, on the agenda, for some reason, the summary ordinances were inadvertently not printed on the, on the agenda. So 15A is actually summary ordinance number 11,595. Motion by Council Member Stagney, second by Council Member DeFrancis. Council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 15 is summary ordinance number 
11,596, an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from Gills Corporate Sales Incorporated in the amount of $11,260 to furnish and install ceramic tile and two walk-off grate mats for the City Hall Building C in accordance with letter bid number 13-1502. Motion by Councilmember Carroll, second by Councilmember Reno. Council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 15C is summary ordinance number 11,597, an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from Han Enterprises Incorporated in the amount of $6,679 to furnish four sets of Steel Pro volleyball systems with accessories and pads for various gyms in accordance with telephone bid number T13-2075 for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Motion by Council Member Brannigan, second by Council Member Dinapolis. Council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 15-D is a resolution accepting the, as complete the contract with D.L. Daigle and Co Company, LLC, for the interior and renovations of the second floor of the old Wentwood Gymnasium for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Motion by Council Member Dinapolis, second by Council Member Black. Council Member Dinapolis. Madam Chair, at this time I'd like to have a deferral on 15D, a one meeting deferral, please. I know uh, my office has been trying to get up with, uh, to do a, so I can tour and see what the renovations are and see how they've been, been done in the building. So I'll ask for a one meeting deferral, please. Okay. Motion by Council Member Dinapolis, second by Council Member Black on a one meeting deferral. Council members, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0 for a one meeting deferral. Do you want me to? Um, we're going to go ahead and read our ordinances and resolutions in summary. Um, something that will be unusual is on 16A, our council clerk will have to read um, some additional information into the record. Um, as required by uh, new state statute 4219.1 that was enacted uh, in this previous legislature. This first piece of legislation, while we will not discuss it tonight, um, it, Mr. Conley said it would be okay to tell you the purpose it's being put back on the agenda um, is that there was a new state statute that went into effect after we had begun the process that we normally do of levying the millages and taxes for uh, our property taxes for the city of Kenner. Um, since the new statute was approved, even though we had already begun the process, it allows for a 30 to 60 day layover of the legislation on our agenda prior to voting on it. Our charter, which we had always done in the past, was 28 days, which we did follow. Um, in addition to that, because we had started the process, um, there was some case law, I believe, that Mr. Conley has asked for a ruling from the Attorney General that because we had started the process under the old state statute that we had, in fact, met all of the criteria for levying the taxes. But in, in an effort to just make certain that we've done everything we could possibly do and get in for the deadline to have these taxes imposed, um, we've put it back on the agenda to meet the criteria of the new state statute. This is something that's playing out across the entire state um, because a lot of municipalities and parishes levy their taxes prior to this law going to an effect August 1st. We have a lot of things to get done way before then, um, but it is what it is. And, and so at this time, um, the statute requires that we read into the record the date that we will be voting on this um, as part of the criteria for having it on for first reading. So that's why you'll hear a little bit different than what you see as 16A. And um, uh, again, we'll discuss it in more in depth when uh, the legislation comes up or when we hear from Mr. Conley um, on what the Attorney General's opinion was. So, uh, Council Clerk. Um, yes, ma'am. The notice of public hearing will read the City of Kenner Council for the City of Kenner will hold a public hearing on October 17, 2013 at 5 p.m. in the Council Chamber of Kenner City Hall, 1801 Williams Boulevard, Kenner, Louisiana, for the purpose of discussing the following. Summary Ordinance Number 11,598, an ordinance levying the annual 
tax millage rates for the year 2013 totaling 17 and 51 hundredth mills on the dollar of the assessed valuation of all taxable property within the corporate limits of the city of Kenner, Louisiana on the 2013 tax roll. Item 16B is an ordinance approving the sale of lot 11A and its improvements located in square 41, Old Kenner subdivision, Kenner, Louisiana, Kenner Jefferson Parish, Louisiana. Item 16C is an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from Heartland Park and Recreation LLC in the amount of $12,611.99 to furnish and install modern shade playground cover or equal at Galatas Playground in accordance with seal bid number 13-6162 for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Item 16D is an ordinance authorizing the utilization of Jefferson Parish contract number 55-13566 with Flint Trading Incorporated for the purchase of thermoplastic pavement markings on an as-needed basis in an amount not to exceed $50,000 annually for the Department of Public Works. Item 16E is an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from BLD Services LLC in the amount of $1,115,150 for the improvements to Cattle Farm Road Lift Station 4224 and Force Main to Duncan Chateau Lift Station 4200 project in accordance with seal bid number 13-6166 for the Department of Public Works. Item 16F is an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from Advanced Quality Construction Incorporated in the amount of $643,407.80 for the 31st and Washington Lift Station upgrade project in accordance with seal bid number 13-6167 for the Department of Public Works. Item 16G is an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from Diamond Electrical Company Incorporated in the amount of $155,138.46 for the Esplanade Mall signal improvements in accordance with seal bid number 13-6169 for the Department of Public Works. Item 16H is an ordinance accepting the responsive bid from Crescent Decal Specialists Incorporated for an annual contract to supply 45,500 break tags at a cost of $9,100 and no cents per year in accordance with letter bid number 13-1503 for the motor vehicle inspection station and inspection and code enforcement department. Item 16I is an ordinance approving an agreement with Kyle Associates LLC for professional services in connection with the installation of the new force main from trans Chateau Transfer Station to Wastewater Treatment Plant Number 3 and an amount not to exceed $208,870 for the Department of Public Works. Item 16J is an ordinance approving change order number one to the contract between the City of Kenner and Tuna Construction LLC for the Bertha Lee Jackson Improvement Project, City Project Number 12-6106, increasing the contract time by 46 calendar days for the Department of Community Development. Item 17 is reports from the Council and or Special Committees. We have none. Item 18 is new business. This was taken earlier. Item 19 I'm sorry. is. Sorry, I'm sorry. Nope, you were it. Can we go back, please, to item 17? Yes, ma'am. Item 17 is reports from the council and our special committees. Yes, Councilmember Black. I didn't rush to put okay. my, my button on because so it's not your fault because everybody <laughs> always has something to say. I just would like to once again remind everybody that this Sunday at Our Lady of Perpetual Help Church, we're having the 114th ceremony for the St. Rosalie pro uh, processional that has been going on since 1899. Um, the the uh, processional leaves say uh, perpetual help after the three o'clock mass and it, it's homage to St. Rosalie who was promised in 1899 to if they would relieve the famine that was causing um, uh, the, the animals in the farmland community that Kenner was at that time were having uh, anthrax, and if 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 that her their promise came true that they would keep up this procession for her on a day on a yearly basis, it's now 114 years. Of course, uh, I, as I tell people, when I was a little girl back in the 50s, they had 
um, when we'd be coming back to the church from the processional, there would be people still leaving. That's how many people were involved uh, in a two mile um, walk. There would be two miles of people walking uh, in this parade. The year, over the years with um, the, the media and the, and, the, and the sports and the Saints competition with the Saints, uh, it's dwindled down. So we'd like everybody that has some faith and, and belief that they would accompany us this Saturday, this Sunday. Uh, the, the Mass is at 3 o'clock at Perpetual Help, and um, right after the Mass, the processional will start. And uh, there will be no 5 o'clock Mass at Perpetual Help uh, this Sunday. So I urge everybody to please come and participate in this wonderful and inspiring event where the prayers are said by the community, and they walk through the areas of District 1 on Jefferson Highway and Kenner Avenue from the church, and it's a very inspiring and moving procession. So I hope to see more people out there this year. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Black. Councilmember Stagney. Thank you, Madam President. I, I again, am gonna be there this year. It's a wonderful, inspirational event. My boys, who I'm so very proud of, will be altar service again this year. Um, I'd also like to say that on the 24th of August, we did have the 2013 Kids Safety Fair. Uh, considering what the weather was supposed to be like, there was a really nice turnout. And while I was there, Council President Brannigan was there, and the mayor and I spoke uh, opening up the festivities. So we appreciate uh, Tim Tully, Bob Pastor, and Martin Short, Short, and all what they have done to bring this to the city of Kenner and that awareness. So we're very appreciative of that. I do not see the code director. I wanted to bring up, I uh, brought it up last meeting, I'm bringing it up again. Uh, I've not gotten a response from code on 3310 Colorado, uh, and I've given them pictures. Uh, the previous director of code, I asked them that house needed to be demolished back, uh, back in 07. It has been vacant. Uh, I've sent pictures in. I need a structural analysis done, and I will be putting legislation on the next meeting to hold the public hearing for it to be repaired or demolished. It has been vacant and it is a safety hazard and the residents that adjoin that property are very, very upset. Uh, third, and I'm gonna let, uh, I was not able to attend um, yesterday morning, uh, the Kenner Discovery and Health Sciences Academy opened up at the old Majuri School. Uh, my son, I had to bring him to school and uh, those duties come first, but I'm gonna ask Councilman DiNapolis, who I believe attended, to say a few words about the ribbon cutting and uh, what, what happened over there. Kent? Okay, let's see. Um, Thank you, Madam President. Okay, Kent, you can take your light off. I'm gonna have to give you the mic. All right, because there's other people ahead of you. Go ahead. Give me the mic. Yeah, um, thank you, Joe. I tell you, it was a, it was a fantastically attended event by all Jefferson Parish as well as Kenner um, uh, dignitaries there. The school is, is really remarkable. It got put together by uh, Henry Shane and his group um, to forge a, a, a school that was a little special. Um, and it's been almost two years in the making, and I can tell you that uh, there are a little over 400 students right now at that school. Uh, had to be a lottery system to get into the school. Um, we need to bring more schools like this to Kenner because this is what uh, what people are looking for. Uh, you know, the, the special education that it does bring, um, the very one-on-one uh, -on -one education that it has. And I will tell you this: that you know, Joe, you did a fantastic job of straightening out those streets over there by that school. I can tell you that um, uh, that was much needed. And thank you for putting that because that's going to be well traveled by those those kids and that family there. And almost the entire school board was there. Uh, I know the mayor was there and, and made a little speech, but it was um, Councilman DeFrancis also was there as well as, as Michelle and Keith Rayner was there as well. Um, and I, I can tell you that uh, the one thing that they said that the, the committee that actually brought that, uh, that school here to Kenner said, you know, we got our sights on putting two more up in Kenner. And I'll tell you what, I, I'm, I'm gonna encourage them to do that because if you saw the lottery, um, or about six months ago, for to get the kids into the school because the, the you know what they only had limited space. It was incredible. And Joe, you have a wonderful school in your district. I think it's going to stay there. If I understand, and I think what they're going to look to do is do a high school 
uh, version of that in District 5. So uh, once again, uh, Kenner's on the move. It's moving well. Thank you, Joe. Very nice. Councilmember Reno. Thank you, Madam uh, President. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody that Ken, uh, Kenna TV or KTV is now available on youtube.com at forward slash Kenna TV online. And it has all of the uh, major city events, the studio shows, as well as all of the uh, 2013 city council meetings. And I wanted to let everybody know, I've had lots of people ask in, in District 3 about uh, where the comeback in used to be, what's going to go up there, and that is going to be opening on Monday. Um, it's called Two, Two Amigos Mexican Buffet. Um, uh, Councilwoman DeFranches met me over there yesterday, and we got a little tour. So it's you know it's going to be a nice little restaurant. He really did a real nice job uh, putting it together. So that's it. Councilmember DeFranches. Thank you. Absolutely. They did a phenomenal job. On the, I think they, it looks lovely on the inside. I think it, it's going to be first rate. Um, also, I want to congratulate Mr. Uh, Martin Short and his, and his group. Uh, Councilman Dinopoulos and I were also out there for a long time. And I'll tell you what, some of those children who got to the mic and started to sing, it absolutely touched your heart. Uh, I think it was a great event. And um, again, thank you for the many years you've worked hard to, to bring that to the city of Kenner. Um, and Councilman uh, Dinopoulos, I spoke to the people the other day and they actually have a potential site for their next school and they're moving forward with it. And it's, uh, I'm not gonna mention where because I don't wanna jinx it, but it's actually great because they already have a potential site. Um, and finally, Italian Night Celebration is being sponsored by the Divine Mercy Mature Adults on Friday, September the 20th from 6.30 to 9 at the Nativity Auditorium on Loyola Drive in Councilman Dinopoulos' district. Uh, it's $15 per ticket, and it includes your salad, your entree, which is meatballs, Italian sausage, pasta, possibly lasagna, bread, dessert, wine, and beverages. And they even have entertainment by Joe Danone. And um, if you're interested, you can contact Irene Corona at 466-3637 or Doris Rappold at 466-6838. Um, and again, um, these are lovely ladies, and I know they're working hard on this, and I'm sure that everyone who attends will have a good time. Thank you. Okay, Councilmember Carroll. Thank you, Madam President, and I'd like to thank uh, Councilwoman Black for mentioning the St. Rosalie Festival. I, too, am a member of Our Lady Perpetual Health Church and have attended many of the St. Rosalie marches, not as long as, not as many as she has, but I have shared the number of marches. And uh, the thing she said for sure is that this is something that the community, even for the people who are not members of the church, it's more of a community event that it is held in reverence. And the people who are not members of the church, when their procession is in place, recognize the importance of the many years that it has done. And people stop and uh, pay attention and, and, and give it honor th that they should. So we look forward to that. Also, I'd like to mention that a week ago, we had a meeting at the pavilion in North Kenner, which addressed the Path for Progress pro, uh, projects that will be happening in the Lincoln Manor subdivision on 31st Street and also in North Kenner on West Esplanade. And I'd like to just mention that again. Mr. Dylan Coffer, do you have any additional information about when have the dates for, that, for those projects have been established, if so, we would like to, to hear about those. Yes. 31st Street is the next on the list right now. They start in West Espanade. Uh, 31st Street should be starting within the next couple of weeks. Uh, I think Jose sent the notice to proceed out. We're waiting on the, I got a fun form today with the bus pads for you. So uh, we'll be filing that out tomorrow and um, they should be starting within the next two weeks. Right, and that's a good segue into at the meeting. Uh, I'd like to also thank a lot of members of the Lincoln Manor Civic Association for participating and coming to the meeting. And there were some questions about the funding for the bus pads. And you can assure all of us that that piece has been put into place, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you, and I'd like to thank Community Development, Ms. Alita Terrell and her department 
for, for supporting this, for, for coming up with the funding for these bus pads that originally were not put in um, over 10 years ago, but this is something that will support the entire city of Kenner and everyone that rides the Kenner Loop, which there's about eight or nine bus stops along 31st Street when they're stopped, is an indentation in the streets. And along with these bus pads, it will support this and keeps the streets the street in a pretty good shape for years to come. So we'd like to thank community development, Mr. Rell and her department, your department for supporting this and um, ensuring that the buses will be a safe environment for everyone that rides the bus. Thank you, Madam President. Okay. Councilmember Reno wanted me to remind everybody that the Patterns for Progress meetings will be coming up uh, Wednesday, September 11th from 6.30 to 8.30 at the Pavilion at Kenner City Park. Tuesday, September 17th at Driftwood Park Country Club from 6.30 to 8.30. Wednesday, September 18th at Kenner City Park, 6.30 to 8.30. And Tuesday, September 24th at Heritage Hall from 6.30 to 8.30. And Thursday, September 26, 630 to 8:30 at Heritage Hall. Okay, and all of our football begins this weekend, so everybody be safe in driving to and from your events and the games. Councilmember Janapolis, did you have anything else? Your light was on because of previously. Okay. All right, uh, Mayor Yenny. Um, I apologize for my tardiness tonight, but I had to go to a soft opening in Councilman Reno's district for the two amigos, and I can tell you they have some un unbelievable flautas, and uh, they had a very good crowd of some invited guests to try it out. Um, I think they're, they were affiliated with ponchos, and it's of the same caliber, and, but, a, but a, a higher end from what they're saying that they're serving, so it was very, very well attended, very nice. We also went to go check on some grass cutting on Power Boulevard, and I'm glad we did this because the traffic on West Esplanade right now is out of control because of the path to progress, so we will be putting reader boards. Uh, Jerry, get the, write this down. I hadn't even told you yet, but we will be putting reader boards at uh, Power and West Esplanade and also at Williams and West Esplanade telling people to take alternate routes because they're going to be closing off. They've already started to close off one lane of traffic down West Esplanade between Williams Boulevard and Ole Miss where the Pass to Progress is going to be doing that first phase of blacktopping. So anybody heading, heading that direction tonight, use an alternate route. Loyola, Loyola seems to be pretty good if, if, you, <laughs> if you've got to go anywhere in district in the northern part of three or four tonight. So, but, uh, but we will be making sure we get that out. Valerie's already updating the website and the Facebook page to let people know because traffic is pretty heavy right now. Okay. So we're losing a ground patty, but we're getting a three amigos. And don't take West Esplanade. I mean, two amigos. <laughs> <laughs> I just put him in business with someone else. Okay, uh, Council Clerk. Yes, ma'am. Item 18 is new business. This was taken at an earlier juncture in the meeting. Item 19 is unfinished business and a motion to reconsider or remove from a tabled position. We have none. Item 20 is persons wishing to address the Council on special subject matters. Mr. Martin Short. Good evening, Madam Councilman, Council Persons, Mr. Mayor. I'm Martin Short, 3325 Appian Drive, District 4. She's occupied. Welcome. It's our custom after the Kids Safety Fair to return to the Council, give you a report from our side, and give you our wholehearted thanks. Because as was mentioned earlier, we thought we'd be rained out, we 50% chance of a storm, and it didn't rain a a little bit so it was a really big success and on the smaller side we invited SPCA to come and they brought their dogs and they were successful they had one adoption so that's always nice the kids had a great time uh, the smokehouse hey chief that that thing is great they just lined up and the canines did you see the canines perform uh -uh. oh they were they were nice so everybody came out uh, we had a problem, as you remember, with our World War II friends. Uh, Bert got sick, so he wasn't able to make it. But they still had a stand, and they still talked. Uh, Ron was out there. It was really, really good. So I want to thank everyone, and Mr. Mayor, everybody. It was, a, it was a good thing, and we're looking for next year will be an even better event. So 
So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Short. Mr. Almarella. Al Morella, 4260 East Loyola Drive, 5th District, 41 years. I want to comment on an article in the Time Picayune uh, on August the 28th uh, relative to this car issue again with uh, Councilman Carroll, so I'm going to direct this to you, Councilman Carroll. Uh, this opinion came back from the Assistant AG. Uh, it as far as I'm concerned, it contains some uh, ambiguities. And uh, I think the only way this issue is gonna be cleared up as far as I'm concerned is if that city car remains within the city limits of Kenner. And Councilman Carroll, you find you another means of transportation to your full-time job. Now, uh, I got some comments I wanna direct to the media. I wanna say this, one of the local news stations followed Councilman Carroll to his full-time job and practically camped out under the Claiborne overpass and waited for Councilman Carroll to come out of his full-time job to confront him. But the two issues back here in Kenner concerning our code enforcement department and two uh, uh, city contractors involved in doing work on private property, the news media didn't touch this. The only one that said anything about the, uh, uh, about the code enforcement was the town Picayune. But the, all the three broadcast stations didn't cover none of this, but they followed Councilman Carroll to his full-time job in the city of New Orleans and camped out under the Claiborne overpass. Now, I want to direct these comments to the one journalist we got sitting here in this room and all the other journalists out there. It appears to me that there may be some political bias in the news media here, and I want to say this, any journalist that allows themselves to be controlled by the political establishment, they need to be ashamed to call themselves a journalist, because in my opinion, they're nothing more than an overpaid puppet on a string. Now, anybody got any comments, any questions for me? Thank you, Mr. Morales. Thank you. Bertha Eason. Good evening. State your name and address for the record, please. Bertha Eason, 309 Jackson Street, Kenner, Louisiana. Welcome. Uh, good evening, Councilman. I'm here today <clears throat> to address the Councilman's about the property at 305 Jackson Street. Do who, that's. Councilman uh, Carroll's district? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is it possible that I can have a meeting with uh, whoever that's concerning the uh, board in their place and everything? Yes, ma'am. Um, we can get the council clerk to get your phone number or Mr. Gr Carroll can meet with you after the meeting. He'd be okay. happy to. Is that? Thank you very much. Okay. Council President. Oh, this is okay, that's all? Yes, ma'am. I need to meet with Mr. Carroll. All right. Mr. And Carroll. Uh, from there, we'll go. Whatever okay. else has to be done. And, and at any time, you can call City Hall and schedule a meeting with your council member. Well, okay. I did. I okay. called and um, I think that was the secretary, Mr. Carroll. Uh, were you there? Okay. His secretary had um, mm -hmm. said he, you know, he wasn't in. Mm -hmm. So I came to the meeting to see if it was on the agenda for the place, but I didn't find it on there. Miss, well, when did you call Miss Eason? Today. Today. Yes, when sir. was when was the incident that happened to your property? Friday. Friday. So uh, this is my first time. Hearing about it. you called earlier today, so this morning, this okay. morning. Yes, right? Sir. So, if you want to talk a little bit more after the meeting, I'll look look forward to that because there may be some other issues going on that that I'm not liberty or you shouldn't be liberty to be talking about publicly right now. So right. after the meeting, I think it it'd be best if we had a chance to bring me up to speed exactly what's going on, but I, I, I tend to believe there are some other issues involved that needs to be addressed. Thank you. 
Thank you, Madam President. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you all very much. All right. Thank you for coming. Um, Bishop, you really coming to talk to us, or are you just coming to just, observe? I just, I just came, you know, you're doing such great work, and I just, you know, I've been a uh, church in the neighborhood. We just want to let you know that we are here, and certainly we're available, and you all are doing such great work, and keep the good works up. And what, the name of your church, Bishop? It's Glory God Baptist Church Ministry. It's 3017 Dawson Street in Kendall, Louisiana. And my name is Bishop Adam Allen. I'm the overseer and founder of that church. Great. Well, welcome, and thank you for opening our, our meeting with a beautiful prayer, and you're welcome anytime. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Daryl Berg. He was here earlier. Thank you. Alan Crane. Yes, sir, come forward. Take your time. <laughs> you are last on the list. That went quick, huh? Some people just come to, to observe. Your name and address for the record, sir. Yes, Councilman Person. My name is Alan Crane, and uh, I'm, let's see, 2218 Connecticut Avenue, Kenner. Uh, I, I'm a homeowner for the last 12 years in Kenner. I also have six rental units um, on that side of 19th Street, and, and four of them right back here on Oxley. And the very most important thing is, I've I bought the one back, the two units back here in Oxley, back in 1984. And um, what I'm here about now is what's been happening for a little over a year. It's been going on for years, but it's been a little over a year about the dumping of contractor items. Big on you know, Florida, Delaware, Connecticut, Colorado, California. Back in California in Colorado, 1900 block, over the other side, right, almost like right in the back of the park. It's been going on with, with junk cars that have been uh, wrecked. It's by Barry Construction and the other businesses there. Now, for about the last 10 months, I slowly discovered they're, they're filling it up with job site debris on Colorado, all the way over to the 20, into the 2000 block and people are dropping more junk. And all this has been going on for the last seven, eight months at least, talking with um, one of the businesses back there. Every time they go in, they, on Colorado, across from Barry, every time they go in there with these bulldozers and they, they use the, the jungle, it's been a jungle around Oxley and there's a center lot in back of Oxley and back of the property right in back of us. Every time they go in with a bulldozer, they're disturbing the habitat of all these animals that they have back there. There's a lot of them. In fact, I talked with Dwight of the uh, rehabilitation place on 20th in California. He opened up in the last year. He said, he's, I just learned this yesterday. He said he saw a bobcat back there across from him behind Barry's construction. There's a whole food chain. But what basically what I was getting at is, they go in with this big equipment, dumping. They they put the, they dumping job site debris. This has been going on for a long time, and they sh bulldoze the trees on top of it. Please, all of y'all, the public, go go see this. Just go over 20th Street. I'm not exaggerating. The amount on. Uh, you have 30 seconds. Hmm. 30 more seconds. Oh, you got a time limit? Okay, I didn't know that. This is the first time ever. Okay, yeah. It's just a, it, you know, all this job site debris is sewer line pipes, everything you can think of on both these streets. You can't do anything with this property now that they're dumping Pontchartrain Beach foundations of buildings, steam and slabs. I don't understand how this can become a waste site there. Three blocks okay. away from Kenner City Hall. Okay. Okay. Um, your district council member, Council Member Stagney, would like to address the subject matter. Okay. Yes. 
Councilmember Stagney. Thank you, Madam President. Tomorrow, I want you to call my office. Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Joanne's gonna pick up the phone. Yes, sir. We'll route uh, the complaint to code and ask them to go uh, see exactly what's being dumped there, and we'll start a, a, a process to follow up on that complaint. 468-7248. 7248. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you for coming. Okay, seeing no further discussion, meeting adjourned. <laughs>